does. Oh, this mall looks really cool already. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video, and welcome back to the Colorado Springs region. As Sophia and I wrap up our time at Citadel Mall, we decided to trek up 9 miles away off of North Academy Boulevard. Off of the same street, 9 miles up the road, we come over to the second mall in the Colorado Springs region. This mall is the newer mall of the two, opening in the 80s did pretty well at the start however now thanks to poor ownership is struggling as well but it is a very cozy mall in the middle of the mountains welcome to the chapel hills mall in colorado springs let's check out this 80s mall remodeled in the 90s and see what it has to offer under namdar's ownership let's take a stroll through this wonderful mall with sophia As we look back on the history, Chapel Hills Mall's planning would begin in the mid-70s, with the project receiving approval in August of 1974. General Growth Properties, the same developers as Citadel Mall, would also be tasked to develop Chapel Hills Mall. Construction would begin in late 1979 and would be finished by the summer of 1982. Around this time, Sears as well as the Six Screen Movie Theater that were accompanying the mall as anchors would open their doors ahead of the mall. Chapel Hills Mall would officially open its doors on August 4th, 1982. The mall's original anchors would consist of Sears, H.J. Wilson's catalog showrooms, Kmart, and Fashion Bar. However, that would not be all, as in March of 1985, Jocelyn's would join as the mall's fifth anchor store to Chapel Hills Mall, and the H.J. Wilson's would be converted to a service merchandise when service merchandise acquired the whole company. Chapel Hills Mall was no slouch. It would keep expanding even farther, as in September of 1986, Mervyn's would even join as another anchor and add more space to the mall. And Jocelyn's would expand their store in 1987. The 90s would keep powering Chapel Hills Mall with even more new additions, making it seem like it will be the dominant shopping center for the Colorado Springs region.
until everything seemed to go downhill during the early 1990s as Chapel Hills lost many tenants and would struggle to attract new ones. Part of the blame for this was thanks to several discount retailers like Kmart and Sears, discouraging many higher end chains from coming to Chapel Hills Mall. Dillard's is a prime example. They originally planned to open their Chapel Hills Mall store in 1990, intending it to be the first Colorado Springs location. However, they chose to instead open at Citadel Mall first, as the mall saw vacancy rates as high as 15% during this time, and 1994 would see service merchandise close its doors for the final time. However, this would actually be great news in the end. JCPenney would move into the old service merchandise space a year later, and they would attempt to cater more towards the wealthier customers with higher-end decor and a limited amount of hardline goods. This would end up working great in Chapel Hills Mall's favor in the end, as in the later half of the 1990s, Chapel Hills Mall saw massive growth, and new retailers would join in thanks to a $40 million renovation project. They would redo the mall concourses and halls to give the look you see today, with the wooded ceilings as well as neon in the skyline lights at the time, and just giving them all a much more contemporary look. As well as that, 1996 we could see Carmike Cinemas close their old location of six screens and expand into a larger building that was vacated by First Cafeteria to have a much larger space at Chapel Hills Mall. Dillard's finally saw opportunity and they would open their three-level store at Chapel Hills Mall in 1997. Even with that, Dillard's did not want to operate two stores because they had such a large space now at Chapel Hills Mall. So the Jocelyn space, when Dillard's acquired Jocelyn's, would end up getting sold to Foley's in 1998 and Foley's would happily operate in the old Jocelyn's pad. The end of the decade would see great success, with an ice skating rink being added to Chapel Hills Mall during the renovation, as well as a two-story Borders Books, Ruby Tuesday, a children's play area, a climbing wall, and many new national retailers. The 90s would end up working in Chapel Hills Mall's favor, even with the struggles. And this would lead us into the 2000s. The success of the late 1990s would continue on into the early 2000s, as Old Navy would open their first Colorado Springs location in Chapel Hills Mall in 2000, and Foley's would rebrand their store to Macy's in 2006 during the May and Federated Department Store's buyout. However, early 2006 would see Mervyn's close along with most of their Colorado locations. However, that would not be all bad news, as the Old Mervyn's space would be converted into Burlington Coat Factory 
in 2007. As well as that in 2007, the old ice skating rink would get converted into a brand new Dick's Sporting Goods store. However, the 2008 recession would not be kind to Chapel Hills Mall. Kmart would end up closing their location for the final time in 2009, and during the midst of the recession, the mall's owner and developer, General Growth Properties, would file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Thankfully, General Growth would emerge from bankruptcy. However, they did not want to keep Chapel Hills Mall in their portfolio as it was listed as one of their underperforming malls. They would end up selling it in June of 2011 to Garrison Investment Group for $71.5 million. And at the time, Chapel Hills Mall would be back to the stage it was in its early 1990s form, back to 15% vacancy. 2011 would see Old Navy move its space to a nearby strip mall outside the mall, and Borders would close their location for the final time due to the company's bankruptcy. Carmike Cinemas would end up moving their theater, though, to expand to a new 13-screen theater and expand into the old Kmart space. As well as this, H&M would even open a store at Chapel Hills Mall in 2013. However, the darkest age would happen in 2014. J.C. Penney, the mall's savior, would end up closing their location for the final time due to underperformance in 2014. Gordman's would end up briefly opening in the second floor of the former J.C. Penney. However, would close a few months after they opened, when the chain would file for its own Chapter 11 bankruptcy. 2017 would end up seeing Carmike Cinemas rebrand to AMC. And in 2017, Garrison Investment Group would receive foreclosure notices on Chapel Hills Mall, totaling $37 million. And in 2018, Chapel Hills Mall would finally go to the Doom owner, Namdar Realty Group. Unfortunately, Namdar still owns Chapel Hills Mall to this day. They would end up buying it for $33.5 million. Namdar would not be kind to Chapel Hills Mall, and they would just let it struggle on. Judging by how Namdar's maintenance is holding up, you can see the struggle of getting downstairs. Half of the escalators and the glass elevators broken, so we're going to have to head into Macy's to go downstairs. We have to take the Macy's elevator down because of how many broken escalators there are in this mall. This is this is the extent we go to to keep filming. Hey, ladies, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Toys R Us. <laughs> Late 2018 would finally see Sears announce their Chapel Hills Mall location's closure, and Chapel Hills Mall would end up losing its Sears in early 2019. Following this, the pandemic would happen, and it would not be kind to Chapel Hills Mall. Many stores would flee at this time, and the mall's occupancy would drop pretty fast. Whilst it is definitely not dead, Chapel Hills Mall is struggling a lot. Unfortunately, with Namdar in ownership, it's going to be hard to tell what happens, because Burlington Co. Factory even left in 2020 after it failed to have a lease agreement during the pandemic, and Burlington would end up relocating to a strip mall across the street in 2021. However, the Sears would also get demolished in 2021 to make way for 300-unit apartments. So... The future of Chapel Hills Mall is pretty unknown, and only time will tell. Chapel Hills Mall was the second mall I visited in Colorado Springs, and when I visited with Andrew, it was my first time there, unlike Citadel, the other mall in Colorado Springs, which I had been to once before. I was under the assumption that Chapel Hills Mall would be a lot more lively of the two malls, and less dead, but I was very wrong. Chapel Hills was much, much more dead than Citadel. It was a very quiet mall with many vacancies and few people, but it, had such, but it was such a stunning mall, from the pastel floor tiles, the beautiful blue lights on the ceilings, the stunning fountains, 
and the planters. This mall was, was an amazing late 80s through early 90s masterpiece. And I had the best experience at this mall with Andrew for the first time. It was a truly beautiful and romantic experience, and I am happy to report that this is one of my favorite malls that I have ever visited. So, I actually have visited this mall with Sophia twice. This footage was recorded on the first time I was here in September of 2022, but I also revisited this mall in March of 2023 with her as well. <laughs> and I do feel that this mall is genuinely one beautiful mall. The renovation they did here is honestly really stunning, and I'm glad that they kept some charm in this 90s renovation. It looks really nice. The only thing I do wish is that the neon that used to light up in the skylight, I wish it still worked. But otherwise, it's a fantastic mall. The fountain by the glass elevator is absolutely wonderful. And in general, the experience I had, especially on the first time I was here with Sophia, was genuinely wonderful. We had some moments here that I genuinely am never going to forget. The experience I had at this mall was absolutely wonderful. It was more about the time I had with her over the experience of the mall itself. In general though, the mall just being right in the mountains was really nice, and it was honestly a very cozy little mall on the inside. With not too many people, it just felt nice walking around, not having to worry about shoving through crowds of a large thriving mall. Whilst I did think this mall was going to be performing a lot better than it really was, I'm still very glad I visited, and I still hope that Chapel Hills Mall can continue on with great success going into 2023 and beyond. So what are your thoughts? Um, it's pretty nice. I like it. I agree. This, this mall's been absolutely incredible. It's a lot more dead than the other one we went to. But, but it's nice. It's still really nice and I'm enjoying my time here. Um, it's even better with you. And that is where I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you all so much for watching my video tour of the Chapel Hills Mall in Colorado Springs. And I want to ask you, which Colorado Springs Mall do you think is doing better and will live out? Citadel or Chapel Hills? Leave your opinion in the comments below, as well as if you have any memories of Chapel Hills Mall. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like as it greatly helps support the channel, and whilst you're at it, be sure to subscribe for more mall content just like this. Turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any new uploads coming from the channel. I have so many more malls coming to the channel soon and you will not want to miss it. So stick around for the ride, click that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram for more sneak peeks of future videos. Take care everyone, stay awesome, and have a blessed day. I will see you all next time.